Hello, Terry Myers here. Let me give you a piece of really, really good news. Psalms 119 verse 89 says, Forever, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in the heavens. Isn't that great news? We don't have to, we don't have, to have an opinion. We don't have to cast a vote because God already has an opinion and he's already cast a vote. And he said forever, forever, my word is settled. So we can go to his word, his book, find out what he said and take that to the bank. It'll work for you, work for you every time. I talk about these kind of things in my very first book I ever wrote called More Than Conquered. It's 40 years old uh, now, and it's just helped people all over the world, printed in lots of languages and blessed lots of people. Uh, click on the link below. I'll send it to you for free. Help us with the shipping and the, the, the postage, and we'll just send it to you for free. It won't cost you a dime, and it will bless you, and it'll help you to realize that forever, Forever, the Word of God is settled. You already know how to win. You already know what the outcome is going to be. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. God bless you and welcome today to Terry Mize Ministries More Than Conquerors program. We are thrilled as always to talk to you and uh, we've just had a wonderful time over the last several programs talking about the five smooth stones uh, that David used to uh, take down Goliath and cause Israel to have a, an amazing win in a battle that looked hopeless, right, impossible, right. and yet the weapons of our warfare, the Bible says, are not carnal, not but carnal. they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, to overthrow the kingdom of darkness, to overthrow the devil's plans against you and your family. And God has given you an arsenal of weapons that looks like, you know, we you've tried to help us understand it from that story of David and the five smooth stones and how way back in 1974, you won against that hitchhiker that was trying to, you know, take right, your life absolutely. and steal your stuff. Yeah, I just tried to run a comparison between <clears throat> several of my testimonies exactly. and, and what David did there in 1 Samuel 17. Yeah. And what every Christian has to do to win. If you're going to win every time, That's right. you're going to have to use those those five things that we that we've likened to the five smooth stones. Right. And and that's why we're we're calling this series uh, how to win every time. You know, how you can win, how Terry has won, how we've proven through the, the years and decades of just our life on this planet that God's Word, when you, like Gloria always said, when it, it'll work for you if you work it. Yeah, it'll work for <laughs> well, you. Well, this is it. one way she to help She called me on the phone one time decades ago. At, oh, my. And uh, she and Kenneth, she and Brother Copeland had been going through a real battle. Yes. With finances. It was right, right after they'd put on the World Communion Service and, right. and some partners. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What a matter. story. But they were several million dollars in, in debt. debt. And they don't believe in that. And man, they got on their faith and got it done and got it paid off. And, 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 she, and, time. and, and she called me at, at the house. I answered the phone. She, and she said, Terry's Gloria, I just wanted you to know we, we won. We got that paid off. It's done. <laughs> and she said, you know, Kenneth and I discovered something. I said, well, what's that? She said, we discovered that faith still works, but you got to work faith. Yeah, you got to work it. And that's what we want to help you do. That's all we're trying to do is to give you a visual to help you understand that the weapons of our warfare are supernatural weapons. Absolutely. I mean, everything that David said in that conversation that he had with his brothers, with King Saul, with Goliath, he spoke to the people around about him. He had something to say, like you've always taught, that David s says, then said David. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were just you were just teaching this recently up in North Carolina, that faith always speaks 
and faith always acts. Yes. And then faith has to find a place where you're committed. You don't back down, you don't quit. You don't let the clock, the calendar, or even what's on either side of that decimal point or nothing, you know, that you have to stay committed to it and that you do not back down. You, like you did that day with the hitchhiker, and you set it again, 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 and you did it again. You and keep you, doing it till you and win. And you use those five things, right. you know, the name. Right the blood, the word, the covenant, the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to need it all in a battle. Right. You're going to need all of that. And you need to know what's in your arsenal. And sometimes I know all of us, we need to be reminded of the weapons of our warfare. Oh yeah. And if you just take these little bags, you lay that out, put those five smooth stones on them on there where it has engraved on there for you. All we're trying to do is just help you win every single time. That's just phenomenal. Absolutely. You know that God's Absolutely. plan is that we are always more than conquerors. Right, right. Now, I, I wanted you to, to he talk He always to, causes us to triumph. He always causes us to conquer, that we are more than conquerors amid everything that scripture says there in Romans 8. What I, what I wanted the people to hear today, and, and I'm always asking Terry, say, tell me again, how do we do, and, and what is this? And I wanna make sure I've got this right. I wanna get this straight in my understanding. I wanna remember what the Lord said, you know, all of these things that are available to me, I don't want to miss any promise, any weapon. I don't want to miss anything when I'm in the middle of something that I've got to bring out of the realm of the supernatural, out of the unseen realm, over into the realm of the seen. Right. You discovered how God, um, how the, all this battle, um, what, what do we say, the battle plans of hell and how heaven works in the middle of a battle and that when God speaks, then what do we do? What's our job? Well, it's just five little things that the Lord spoke to me one night. This. I was uh, in a church. I was in the pastor's office. I was studying my notes, studying my Bible, about to go out and preach. Right. And the Lord said to me, write this down. <laughs> and so I grabbed a pencil and a pen or whatever, and I wrote it down. And he said, he gave me five things. And they were simple, 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 simple it's things. It's so simple. Anybody can do and this. And so I wrote and them win. down. And uh, the Lord said, go out there and preach that tonight. And I said, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and the Lord said, you are going to do it. Brave boy that I, you are. I said, that's just too simple. I said, they'd laugh at me. If I go out there and preach this tonight, they'd laugh at me. That's so simple. And the Lord said, you preach this tonight. He said, that's the way you've won every battle you've ever won. That's the way Jesus won the battles he won. That's the way that every Bible he wrote, Old Testament and New Testament, won the battles that they I'm won. Here to and it will that's work for true. it will work for every person yes, on the planet. Right. Every Christian that wins, that's what they do. Uh, or if they lose, that's not what they do. Right. And so I wrote it down and I went out there and preached it just just embarrassed. And I tell you the people thought it was the greatest thing since cornflakes. They thought, <laughs> you know, I was a smart guy. And uh, I've been preaching ever since and people people love it. Well But it was you, it was simply five points tell, about tell anything. Us. I used it I used it from from the book of Jonah, but you could put it you could apply it to any testimony in the Bible. Right. And and it's God acts. Number one, God acts. In other words, God's going to say something to you. Right. Uh, either you're gonna you're gonna pick it up in your spirit or you're reading the Bible and God illuminates something to you, or the pastor's preaching and you hear him preach it, or some way or another, God's going to get a message to you. God, God acts. And then number two, you respond. And there's only two responses when God tells you to do something. You either say, yes, sir, or no, sir. You either say, yes, sir, I'll do that, or no, sir, I'm not about to. That's and uh, number three is the devil reacts. What are you laughing about? I'm just laughing at the simplicity of it all. It's just so simple. It's just, I mean, you just can't imagine this is how this all works. But the devil reacts. Now, now Christians are not supposed to react. Christians are supposed to respond. Respond. But the devil reacts. So when you, when God He's tells you to do you. something, and then you say, yes, sir, I'll do that, then up jumps the devil to stop it. He right. reacts. And I don't say that to give him permission to do it. I say that to tell you, that's in the system and that's what's going to happen. That's right. He's going to uh, try to stop you. Just like with David and that's Goliath, right. it says, Goliath cursed David by his demon God. That's right. Well, you can't stop that. Right. You can't stop the devil from cursing you. He's going to tell you, I, I'll get you this time. You got away last time. You got out of it last time. This time I'm going to get you. This time I'll kill you. This I'll kill your wife. I'll kill your husband. I'll kill you. That's, I'll kill your kids. I'll kill your mom, your right. dad. I'll, I'll destroy your business. I'll take your job. Uh, you, you, uh, well, just whatever. Think about I'm going to get you. He's always going to curse you. 
and, just think and, about and what Goliath his brother cursed. said to him. His brother said, "You can't. Who do you think you are? Right, yeah. You know, big, they disdained David's big brother, him. Eliab. Yeah, and then and then Saul said, "Well, you can't go and do this without my armor. Right. You know, you're you're totally unqualified. You're, you're just a boy, and he's been a warrior from his, <laughs> from his youth. And uh, and so d d that's just the way it's going to be. But then I said to you a program or two back that verse 45 in 1 Samuel 17, the story of David and Goliath, in verse 45 is like the most important scripture in that whole testimony. And it says, Then said David to the Philistine. Hello. Right after, right after yeah. Goliath cursed him, uh, in, in, uh, in, in verse 43, the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog? You come to me with staves. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And then verse 44, he said to David, the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I'll give you, I'll give uh, your flesh to the fowls of the air, and to the beast of the field. So he's cursing him, and but then verse forty-five says, "Then said David to the Hallelujah. Philistine, there must be a then says you. There yeah. always must, must be, must be a time that back. you speak. Silence is not golden. Silence, silence can get you killed. And it says, "Then said David to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear." And a shield, and a, but I come to you in the name. And, there, and there's that name we talked about. Name, that yeah. he, I come to you in the name of the Lord of Hosts, which means the God of Angel Armies, Jehovah Sabah. Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah, whom thou hast defied. <laughs> This day, verse 46, this day, I, I like this kid, this 17-year-old kid, doesn't even have a pocket knife. This I'm day sorry. will the Lord deliver you into my hand, and I will smite thee. Now look, he said the Lord will deliver you, but he said, I will kill you. I'm going to kill you. you you got to work in conjunction with the Lord God, here. So, so David didn't say, I'm coming to you in my name. I'm David, and I'm big and bad. No, no, no. He no. said, this, this battle is the Lord's. I, <laughs> the, Lord, I, I, I cut, the Lord will deliver you, but I will smite you. Once he delivers you to me, I'll, I'll kill you. And he said, but I will smite you and take your head from you and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the beast of the field and the fowls of the air. My, my, and my. all the earth may know, know that all there the is a God in know. Israel and all this wow. assembly shall know the Lord saves not with the sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. Now, all those are scriptures out of the Old Testament that he's been meditating, <clears throat> excuse me, that he's been meditating while he's out there keeping the sheep, playing his harp, writing worship songs, praising the Lord, meditating on those scriptures. So when he comes back face to face with Goliath now, he uses the word, the name, <clears throat> excuse me, the covenant, and uh, uh, the blood and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I mean, that's so powerful. That's so powerful. Go back to your five things. But anyway, God acts, tells you to. So yeah. it may be something as simple as, I want you to go pray for Sister Whoopendiddle. Right. It may be, I want you to fast lunch It'd tomorrow. It have to be something big. It may be, I want you to go to church in the morning. It's, it's Saturday night. Be sure and get ready for church in the morning. It may be so, something so simple. Yeah. And you'll say, nope, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll say, I, I certainly will. And you make that commitment. You make that decision, which is part of faith. Faith is always a commitment. And... Uh, uh, or it may be some big deal, like I want you to go to the hospital and pray for somebody with cancer, or I want you to raise that person from the dead, or I want you to, you know, go preach the gospel, or I, whatever. It, whatever God tells you, it doesn't matter. But God's going to act. He's going to say something. And then, number two, you're going to respond to that. And you're either going to say, yes, sir, that's I'll right. do that, or no, I don't think that's a good idea. Respond In Jonah's case, which is what the story I usually use along with that, in Jonah's case, he said, no. God said, Jonah, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. And Jonah said, nope, that ain't going to happen. I'm not going to Nineveh. And so he went down and got on a boat and took off for Tarshish. And so he responded, all right, but he just responded the wrong thing. And up jumps the devil, you know, and uh, we all know the story. Jesus going across the preaching there in Mark chapter 4 on the land and then he gets through preaching and he tells Peter, he said, hey, let me let me preach out of your boat. And he, so he starts preaching out of the boat. And when he got through preaching, then he said, uh, let us pass over to the other side. So that's that's God acting. Right. Jesus said to the disciples, let us pass over to the other side. That was the, that was the command. Right. And they responded. They said, yes, sir, get in the boat. Let's go. And so they started off and up jumps the devil. Here comes a storm. And so they woke Jesus up because he went to sleep immediately and they woke him up. Master, don't you care that we perish? And he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves and, and you know, said, peace, be still. No. One translation says Jesus just said, shh. And it was a great calm. Wow. 
And then he got upset. The disciples said, why didn't you do that? Yeah. Why'd you wake me up? I said, let's go to the other side. That, that ought to be what you're doing. Right. He, That's said, your hey, job. he said, you've been with me all this time. How is it you have no faith? No, no faith. Z- zero. zero faith. How is it you have no faith? Well, and then they were even talking? more scared. It says, it says then they feared exceedingly. But anyway, God acts, you respond. The devil will react to that. Again, I'm not saying that to give him permission or license to do it. I'm just telling you that's the system. That's, that's what his happens. Job. <laughs> uh, if, if it's something as easy as saying, I want you to fast tomorrow, uh, somebody's going to invite you out for dinner. That, don't mean, that doesn't mean they're the devil, <laughs> but uh, that, that is the reaction yeah, to temptation. stop you from doing what yeah. God told you to do. The temptation. And, and then the fourth thing is exactly the same as number two. You respond. Right. Only with the first, on number two, you respond to God. On number four, you respond to the devil. That's and you right. say, devil, I rebuke you, get thee behind me. That's what David did. He responded, then said David to the Philistine wow. and quoted the word to him. And so we've, we've got to understand that, that our response to the devil is just as important as our response to That's God. That's exactly If you don't right. handle number four right, they're not going to be in number five. That's right. Right? J- Jonah almost lost his life over that deal. Uh, but then number five, then God re- God counteracts and you win, and that's yes. how, that's one way you win every time. God <laughs> I mean, acts, you respond. Pattern. The devil reacts, you respond. God counteracts and you win. Now you're you're well warned here about this because this is how it all happens in the realm of the spirit. This is what's happening out there in the realm of the spirit, and you're the one that defines the win or the loss. Yes, in your yes. life. And that's why you can't let the clock or the calendar or, or, or your, your resources on any level, whether it's even health in your body or money in your bank account or lack thereof, or who's on your team, well, you know, it just, just doesn't little, matter. Let me give you just a little, little hint yeah. about doing anything in faith. <laughs> please. You want to know the secret? You want, you want to please, hint? Please, please tell us. You'll never be able to do it <laughs> by yourself. Right. God's not going to tell you to do something you can do. Right. God's going to tell you to do something you can't do. Whenever, whenever the little, whenever the the, the multitude was there. Now, 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 the Bible tells us this story about the feeding of the what we call the five thousand is really like twenty thousand. But God tells us that in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I've discovered over all my years in the Word that any time God tells you the same testimony for in all four Gospels, He's trying to say something to you. That's right. Because most stories you'll just find in one Gospel, maybe two, sometimes even three. But this story of the little boy's sack lunch feeding all those folks, this is in all four Gospels. So it ought to perk our ears up and say, He's trying exactly. to get something across to me. These are clues. They're absolute clues. And so whenever, whenever uh, Jesus was preaching to them, the disciples got tired. They didn't want him to preach. They wanted him to hush. They were hungry. They were tired. So they chose uh, Philip to go up and tell Jesus to hush. Philip, you go, you go tell him, you go tell him he's been preaching too long. <laughs> so Philip goes up there like a knothead, taps him on the shoulder and says, excuse me, master. Yeah. What is it, Philip? I'm preaching. Well, yeah, I know, sir. That's what I want to talk to you about. You've been preaching a long time. One chapter said he'd been preaching for three days. And there's no McDonald's out here. There's no, oh, thank heaven for 7-Eleven out here. There's no, I mean, there's nothing out here for these people to eat. Now, they're tired. They're hungry. Now, send them away so they can get something to eat. And Jesus turned the table on him, and he said, all right, hot shot, feed them. Yeah. And Philip said, oh, no, never mind. I'll just go sit down. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you said they're hungry. You said they're tired. You think I'm abusing them. Now, feed them. And what did he do? The first thing the disciple did was looked in the bag. Yeah. It says, and Philip looked in the bag, counted the money, and he said, we can't do it. Right. Actually, it says 200 penny worth is not sufficient it's that not each sufficient. of these may have a little. Did Jesus ask for a financial statement? No. Did Jesus say how much money we got? No. Uh-huh. Did Jesus say, can we do this? No. Did Jesus ask for his opinion? No. Jesus said, feed them, and he looked in the bag. So Jesus is always going to tell you to do something you can't do. Faith will always tell you to do something you can't do. Faith never makes any sense until it happens. Well, and that brings us down to our fourth stone here, the covenant. That the whole reason we can act and react, we can act and respond is because we know that behind us is the authority of the covenant oh, based on the death, absolutely. burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, who would even lift their head up if you didn't have authority, supernatural, spiritual sure, authority, of 
uh, that has been given to you through what the covenant. What basis would you have to operate yeah, on? Yeah, no joke. I mean, that's it. I mean, th that's the only basis that you have, Terry, is that death, burial, and resurrection that gave us a New Testament covenant. Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday was not very long ago. That, that's the greatest day on a Christian's a calendar. Hallelujah. It is the most important day, the most important holiday on a Christian's calendar is the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. Had Jesus not risen from the dead, had there not been a death, burial, and resurrection, resurrection. then all this would be in vain. In fact, the Apostle Paul said it in 1 Corinthians uh, right. what, 15. Yeah. He said, uh, uh, if, if, if there is no resurrection, resurrection. of the dead, if there is that no. means that Christ didn't rise. And if Christ didn't rise, that means that your preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. And we are of all men most miserable. Most miserable. But I got news for you. Your faith isn't in vain. Your preaching isn't in vain. And we're not miserable because the death is real. The burial is real. The resurrection, thank God, is real. He's alive. And... Uh, well, what we, we could we call, win. what we could actually call Easter Sunday is Covenant Sunday. Covenant Sunday, Covenant Resurrection Sunday. Sunday. Covenant Sunday. It's like the, you know, somebody I heard liken it, said it like Easter Sunday is like our Super Bowl. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's the biggest thing of the year because of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, that gives you all those That's years you've taught spiritual authority. Of course. It's because of this, the of Covenant. Course. That's what separates Christianity from every other religion. That's right. Is all those other prophets, whether they were good or bad, nice or mean, uh, <laughs> imaginary or real, yeah. uh, Jesus is the only one that's, right. that's still alive today. Jesus is the only one that was killed, buried, and rose again. Amazing. That's where you separate the men from the boys. We don't have a lot of time today, but I want to tell you something uh, real fast. One time, I, this is 25 years ago, uh, we were, when Dean and I were pastor in Corpus Christi, I was just having a hard time with things that were going on in the church, and there was some gossiping people, and there was strife, and Surely among not. some of our leadership, perished the thought, and um, I was just walking around, kind of just you know down about it, and trying to pray about it in tongues, and I I couldn't quite seem to get victory about it, and I saw in my head, I, I saw myself throw my hands up and yell, and I just saw this in my mind. I know yeah. it was the Holy Ghost the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That'll and work. we had learned about two years before from Brother Hagen. he said, I just usually act out what I see myself doing. Mm -hmm. And Terry, I was upstairs, and I started down the stairs, and I just threw my hands up yelling, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And I said it over and over, and all the way. did it again. Huh? And then, you and then I did, did it, it again. again. I said it, I didn't just say it once. I said it all the way down the stairs, just yelling and getting louder and louder. And by the time my foot hit the bottom floor, I was all better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was completely, I mean, overcoming. It didn't bother me. It didn't harass me anymore. I wasn't, I didn't have hopeless thoughts. I won yeah. just by yeah. saying, those three, the covenant, the death, the burial, and resurrection. And now that sounds and so simple. Again. And then I did That's it That's always the secret. You just don't quit. Yeah. You don't stop. You do it again. Exactly. Take and what I, works and do it until it does work. And I've won over and over. I've done that several times. I mean, numerous sure. times sure. since that time 25 years oh, ago. of course. And I, Abby was about nine or 10 years old. So that's, I don't know, how long ago was that? I mean, it was just absolutely fabulous to know that the covenant, just saying the death, the burial, yes. and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ yes. helped me win over my own emotions. Oh, How foolish that is, absolutely. but it worked. Amen. I agree. I mean, it, the covenant, when you say the covenant like you did that day, mm -hmm. the name, yeah. the blood, the word, the covenant, and then you knew you were going to have to have the power of the Holy Spirit oh, yeah. if that guy shot at you. Absolutely. If he actually, God was going to have to do something with the bullets. Because he's screaming at me, I'm going to kill you. And I said, you can't kill me. I'm a man of God. I've got authority over you in the name of Jesus. Well, I didn't just make that up. No, right. That's the word. That's the, our covenant with God. Jesus That's said right. in Luke 10, 19, I, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, longest word in the Bible, all the power okay. of the enemy. Well, is that the truth? And nothing, N-O-T-H-I-N-G, no thing nothing. shall by any means hurt you. And I said that to the Lord. He had a, the gun right here in my ribs. And I said, Lord, that's what Jesus said. That's your covenant. And if he pulls the trigger, 
uh, you must do something. MUST must do something with the bullets, and you don't have much room to work with since his gun barrel's up against my side. Well, but you're a covenant God. This isn't about me. It's about your covenant. You're the faithful God that keepeth covenant. So I, I relied on the covenant. I declared right. the covenant. I was using the, the name, the blood, the word, the covenant, right. and then, like you said, the power of the Holy Spirit. And he did shoot at me later five times, as close as I am to you, and the bullets didn't hit me. We're, There's the power of the Holy Ghost right that's, there. That's it right there. We're just about out of time here. We just have Always a few seconds. <laughs> but, you know, it's so important for you to say the Word of God, to speak the covenant, yes, 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 to remember yes. that you have a covenant and spiritual authority over every circumstance in life and always respond in faith. Always have say something back to the Lord. This is what I'm going to do. It must be a then, then says you. And then the devil's going to do something, and then you respond to that word. and say, "I'm going to take your head off." Right. Base <laughs> and then it on you the win. word. <laughs> yep. And that's the way God the Lord has it. And you win. Isn't that something? You speak, and then you act, yes, and then God helps you win in the thing. Well, it's a supernatural thing, and of it takes it the power of the Holy Ghost. So we want to. We're going to talk about that next, and until then, we're going to confess over you one more time. You are more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. Bye, bye, everybody. Love you. Renee and I just wanted to pop in and bless you and speak a blessing over you and tell you about a resource that's available to you. I recently did a message uh, at a church that uh, the pastors had asked me to minister on the supernatural, on the miraculous. And uh, Renee and I both felt like that the Holy Spirit just showed up and, and it did it a good scary. job. Uh, we called it, uh, where are you from? You know, are you from this, this world here? Or are you from the heavenly world? And, and I think you get a hold of it, it'll bless you, it'll minister to you, and uh, you'll learn some things about miracles. Well, it was so profound in that um, we have to realize that we are living in a realm where we're surrounded by the natural, but yet we're called upon, Terry, like you taught, to live out of the supernatural absolutely, realm. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think you probably hadn't heard anything like this before. I asked some pretty pointed questions that uh, I think will be a blessing to you. Sure will. The details are on the screen on how you can get it. Order the CD with shipping and handling or download instantly at terrymize.com. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth. with the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost with power. <laughs> Who yes. went about doing good, good. Not, bad. not bad, good, right. and healing right. all. They dealt with the longest word in the Bible. All healing all. Yes. They were oppressed of, the, of devil. the devil. That tells us God's good, Jesus is good, the Holy Ghost, Ghost is good, is and the devil's bad. <laughs> the devil's the oppressor. And yeah. that, that answered a lot of questions. No, it does. They told us in church that sometimes God and the devil switch places. Yeah, the devil they did together. the good stuff and God did the yeah. bad stuff. Yeah. And that's just not true. Never. Jesus went about doing good. He just kept telling me that he was going to kill me. And I kept telling him that he was not. I said, God, if he pulls the trigger, my job is to believe your word, and your job is to do something about the bullet. 